To discuss the hydrogen emission spectrum, we have to think about a staircase where we have a ball at the first step. Now, in order for the ball to go up a step, we have to give it energy. And likewise, when the ball is going down the step, if you know a little bit about physics, it would have to lose some gravitational potential energy. The reason why I use this staircase analogy is that it is similar to how an electron is transitioning between energy levels. If you supply an electron with energy, it can actually go up an energy level, and it can subsequently lose the energy to go down an energy level. Just like the ball can only go up and down steps, but not in between steps of a staircase, electrons can only absorb a specific amount of energy that allows it to transition between energy levels. It cannot just absorb any amount of energy. And this is what we call discrete energy levels. Going to the Bohr model of the atom, we have a nucleus in the middle followed by the n equals to 1, n equals to 2, n equals to 3, n equals to 4 energy levels or electron shells, and all the way up to infinity. We can also see this represented with the energy level diagram, with n equals to 1 at the bottom and n equals to infinity at the top. Let's say I have an electron in the n equals to 1 energy level, which is also known as ground state in the hydrogen atom. Then I give that electron some energy, and it transitions to the n equals to 2 energy level. If I give it even more energy, it could also transition to the n equals to 3 energy level, or even higher up. Now what does all this have to do with the hydrogen emission spectrum? Well, first we have to understand that light is a form of energy. The electron in the hydrogen atom can absorb energy to be promoted to higher energy levels, or lose energy to be demoted to lower energy levels. And what transition it performs only depends on the amount of energy it absorbs and releases. So for example, there could be a transition from n equals to 10 to n equals to 2, or n equals to 6 to n equals to 8. At the end of the day, there are four very important transitions that are of note to us, and those involve the release of energy, where that energy corresponds to a wavelength of visible light. These four transitions are from the n equals to 3 to n equals to 2 energy levels, n equals to 4 to n equals to 2 energy levels, n equals to 5 to n equals to 2 energy level, and n equals to 6 to n equals to 2 energy level. Notice that I'm using the arrow pointing down here, which represents an electron losing energy. If an arrow is pointing up, it means that the electron is absorbing energy. Now let's connect this to the hydrogen emission spectrum. When the electron is transitioning from the n equals to 3 to n equals to 2 energy level, the amount of energy it releases corresponds to the wavelength of red light. For the transition from n equals to 4 to n equals to 2, that amount of energy corresponds to the wavelength of blue-green light. For n equals to 5 to n equals to 2, that is indigo light, and the transition from n equals to 6 to n equals to 2 involves the release of energy that corresponds to the wavelength of violet light. So recapping this, the first line from the right, which is the red line in the hydrogen emission spectrum, is caused by electrons transitioning from n equals to 3 to n equals 2 energy level. The next line, the blue-green light, is caused by electrons trans transitioning from n equals to 4 to n equals to 2, the indigo light due to n equals to 5 to n equals to 2, and the violet light from n equals to 6 to n equals to 2. The last line on this, on this diagram here is actually not visible to us. It lies in the UV region, and you would normally only see four lines within the IB papers. These four lines correspond to the only four transitions that the electron in the hydrogen atom undergoes that are visible to the human eye. The reason why the rest of the hydrogen emission spectrum is black is because there is just no electron transition that involves the amount of energy that corresponds to those wavelengths of light, such as these two black spaces here. The hydrogen absorption spectrum is essentially the opposite of the emission spectrum, where electrons are actually absorbing energy, in other words, absorbing light to be promoted to a higher energy level, from n equals to 2 to n equals to 3, n equals to 4, n equals to 5, and n equals to 6. One common exam question would ask you to describe the hydrogen emission spectrum. The hydrogen emission spectrum consists of four colored lines, 
of specific wavelengths against a black or dark background. The space between the lines decrease with increasing frequency and the lines converge at higher frequencies. The lines are caused by electrons transitioning from a higher energy level to the n equals to 2 energy level. Let me draw your attention to two important lines here, specific wavelengths and lines converging at higher frequencies. Specific wavelength tells us that the energy levels are discrete, meaning they have a fixed amount of energy. To understand the phrase, the lines converge at higher frequency, you need to have a strong understanding of how wavelength, frequency and energy are interrelated, so check out the previous video on the electromagnetic spectrum if you haven't. We have the hydrogen emission spectrum here, where going from left to right, the wavelength increases. Wavelength, as you know, is inversely related to frequency and energy. So frequency and energy actually increase going from right to left, in the opposite direction as the wavelength. We can observe that as wavelength decreases, or as frequency and energy increases, the space between the colored lines of the hydrogen emission spectrum actually decreases. This has an interesting implication because, as you know, these are not the only four lines of the hydrogen emission spectrum. There are multiple other lines that are just invisible to the human eye. So I've drawn some theoretical lines here, and you'll see that the gap between the lines just keeps getting smaller and smaller. Until at some point, the gap between the lines are so small that the lines appear continuous. And the point where this spectrum looks continuous is known as the convergence limit, where the lines converge. At the convergence limit, the spectrum appears continuous. Something of note about the convergence limit is that it actually corresponds to the ionization energy of the hydrogen atom. Ionization energy will be discussed more in depth in chapter 3. For now, you just have to understand that it involves the removal of an electron to turn an atom into an ion. In the case of the hydrogen emission spectrum, the convergence limit actually involves the n equals to infinity level. Since electrons and nuclei are oppositely charged, they experience attraction. At the n equals to infinity energy level, the electron has so much energy that it can overcome the attraction between itself and the nucleus, leaving the atom entirely, thus causing the atom to turn into an ion. In the energy level diagram, the transition that corresponds to the ionization energy of hydrogen is an arrow pointing up from the n equals to zero energy level to the n equals to infinity energy level. The arrow is pointing up since the electron must gain energy to overcome its attraction for the nucleus. That is it for the hydrogen emission spectrum. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. And I hope to see you in the next video.